Hello, I know you guys were going to be really sad to not have anything to do after the test, so you're welcome, I may do this video. Uh, we are gonna just jump on ahead and get into 6.3. It's pretty straightforward, especially this first part. So this should be in your notes packets. It may have some of these other elements, this warm up and review, 6.3 function, operation and composition. Today we're gonna be focusing on operations, which is going to be addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And when you're using these in functions, these two will turn into basically combining like terms. Everything you've done today, you've done before. It's just gonna be written differently. Multiplication, you might find yourself doing things like distributing. You may very well have to FOIL. And with division, you really, oops, you really don't do division. Sometimes you might have to cancel, reduce. Uh, we're not gonna go back to do anything as complicated as like synthetic or long division. So let's just hop right into it. So what we're gonna be looking at today is um, these operations are going to be adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing functions. That's going to be our day one. And then next part of the week, we'll do day two, and we'll do that in class, compositions. So function notation, for some reason, gets people all confused, and it's not really anything but rewriting something in a more fancy way. These... Um, Functions are defined for us. So function f takes whatever you plug in, does three times that number minus two. Here's function g, h, w, and v. And you're gonna notice these fraction powers just because we just finished learning those, they're not gonna go away. They're gonna be part of sort of our math vocabulary for a while now. So don't overthink this. Just literally take f of x, which is, and I'm looking up here, 3x minus 2, and then add, because it says 2, function g. So then I go look up here, function g is x plus 7. This positive in the middle doesn't really need to distribute because it won't change anything. So I'm just going to do like I set up in the notes real quickly. I'm going to combine like terms. This will be 4x's and then my negative two and a positive seven would go together to be a plus five. And so as soon as my two functions are combined by addition in this case, I make sure that it's in standard form and that I don't have any like terms. So it's simplified standard form. So standard form just means that from the highest power of x on down and simplified means that you don't have any like terms, you put them together. Okay, so then how about subtraction? How is that going to look different? Well, not very much about it's going to be different. I'm going to take three, excuse me, my f of x, which is still 3x minus 2 because I'm just looking up here. But now I'm going to be subtracting my g of x. And so they're using the same functions. And so everything about it looks very similar except this. And that's important because that's like having a negative one. And so in the first example, the parentheses ended up being basically meaningless. But here they really, you have to pay attention to them. They really matter because that negative affects everything after it. So before I combine my x's and before I combine my um constants, my numbers, I really have to pay attention to the signs, the plus and minus. So even though the only thing that was different in this example and the second example is that one was adding and one was subtracting, we certainly got very different answers. This next one looks terrifying because it is division, but um, what I need to do in division is really just see if anything simplifies out. Now that might make you revisit factoring and I probably should jot that down up here. And so in that way, it might be tricky for you. So let's take a look. But a lot of times it doesn't really reduce. Um, and so then you can just leave it as well. So let's see what we've got going on here. We are going to do exactly what it says. We're going to take 3x squared plus 19x minus 14, which is h. 
and we're going to put it over or divide by g of x, which we've already used twice, so I know that g of x is x plus 7. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and factor this top and see if I can get a factor out of there that would allow me to cancel with the bottom and reduce. So this has a three in this first spot. And so some of you do this using a snowflake method. I do this by writing the three here and here. And then I incorporate the three times the four. And I think, okay, I need to split the number 42 in a way that subtracts to be 19. So I'd have a 21 and then times two. That would give me the 42 that I needed here, which is the product of three times 14. And then I need it to subtract to be 19. So then to get a positive 19, I would need a positive 21 and a negative two. This is not the lesson. We aren't really learning how to factor right now. We should already know. And right now I'm just going through and factoring the top. Every time I use this kind of cheaty method and copy the same number in the first spot of each, I know I'm going to need to reduce something. And in this case, this second factor will reduce. So the top becomes 3x minus 2, and this reduces to 1x plus 7, which is super awesome because I already have this one, excuse me, x plus 7 on the bottom. So that cancels. And in the end, my final answer to h of x divided by g of x will be just the 3x minus 2. So those do get tricky because you have to cancel, reduce, simplify, and that might be really easy. Maybe you don't have to do anything, or it can be pretty complicated like what we just did. That's kind of the worst case, but I would rather show you the worst case than the easiest one and then have you feel like it's kind of tricky. Okay, so these are not rewritten, excuse me, like changed at all. These are the same exact ones we had on the previous notes up above, but it's just so that I can still see them. And now I'm just going to go through and do what it says. This says to take W of X, which is this, so 3X to the 1 half, and multiply it by V of X. Okay, so that's this. So now, this is not new math. The notation is new. I will give you that. But the math is what we did before. It's just this initial way that it's written that looks different. This could have been on our worksheet last week when we were practicing these. Here, I'm going to multiply the numbers together to give me 36. And then x, if I'm thinking about what I have to do with those powers, I need to add a half plus four fifths. That's going to require a common denominator. I'm not expecting you to do it without a calculator. So you would take one half plus four fifths, math, enter, enter, and then you write it as an improper but reduced fraction. So my answer to this W of X times V of X is going to be 36 X to the 13 tenths. Now we're back to a subtraction. So subtraction, it's really important to use your parentheses so you know that f is 3x minus 2, and then your subtraction is going to impact all of h of x, which in this case is a lot. 3x squared plus 19x minus 14. So before I can combine my like terms, I need to distribute this negative to all of these values. So I'll have a minus 3x squared a minus 19x and a positive 14 because those negatives will cancel. Now I go through and I look for the highest power of x combining any like terms along the way. Here's a 3x and a mi minus 19x, so negative 16x in my final answer. Then here is a negative 2 and a plus 4, 14, sorry. So I'm going to have a 12. So when I'm all done simplifying and writing it in standard form, f of x minus h of x has this polynomial as its answer. All right, let's do another division. Here I'm supposed to be taking v of x, so 12x to the 4 fifths over w of x, so that's this guy. 
And now this one I can't really factor, but I can do what we've been practicing the last week or so. 12 divided by 3 will return, turn into a 4 just like it always has. And then here, when you have an x on the top and the bottom, you need to subtract the powers. And so when you do that, 4 fifths is greater than a half, and you'll end up taking 4 fifths minus 1 half. And again, get your answer, do math, enter, enter, and that'll pop up a 3 tenths. And the reason I no longer have a denominator is when I go to do these, four-fifths is larger, so the extra three-tenths of an x ends up on top. So even though technically this would be over one, I'm not going to write that because it's weird and unnecessary. All right, so the smart thing to do would be to maybe stop and try these on your own. And then turn the video back on and see how you did because the next two slides are just going to be practicing. Now you might notice that this is written a little differently. Don't get freaked out by that. This is the same notation as this. We like to practice different ways because you might see it differently on like a college entrance test or even in uh, like the ACT. And so these are all the same. Um, problem, it's just they're written in a little bit different version than how we saw them up above. So if it makes you happier, you can certainly rewrite them so that you feel more confident. Okay, give this a whirl. Here the only common terms I had were the numbers. Except for I actually copied this part wrong. I see that I copied this as a plus, sorry. So that will change this part. That should have been from looking up here, 2x minus seven, which will make this end with a negative 11. All right, f minus g. So distributing my negative. putting it in standard form. And here my numbers turn into a minus three. And then this one is asking me to multiply F and G. Well, that's a binomial times a binomial. I'll have to foil this out. So first, outside, inside, and last. Come, excuse me, putting them in order. I'm gonna write down here where I have more space. I need to have the highest, then the next highest, power of x. I don't have anything that's actually common, so they won't go together. So I just have to make sure that I write them in the proper standard form. All right, one more round of practice, keeping in mind that again, this notation, don't let this freak you out. It just means f of x times v of x. Here, this simply means w of x times itself. They could have also written it as w of x squared. All of these things mean the same, just different notation. And this one, I'm simply taking the function v of x, putting it over g of x, and then I'll see if I can reduce, cancel, or anything along the way. So let me get rid of this so I have some little extra space to write. Again, it's probably not a terrible idea to try it on your own and then see if you and I are getting the same thing. So here, f times v. Oh, this is dreadful. This is going to require a little bit of attention to detail because it's easy to get lost. I will need to do some double distributing. First, I'm going to multiply everything in this second part by 2x.
And then I'm going to go back through and multiply everything by a negative 7. And then I'm combining so that I have it in my final um, standard form. Highest power of x, combining like terms, combining these like terms, and done. Okay, let's see get myself a little room there. So what is w of x? This. And I'm going to multiply that by itself. Okay, this looks tricky, but it's going to be actually pretty slick. This is going to be 3 times 3, so 9. And then this is the root of x plus 8 times square root of x plus 8. And we have learned the square root of something times the square root of that same thing equals that thing, but without the square root. So this product simply becomes x plus 8. So now I'm just going to distribute. And then I'm done. I have it in standard form, simplified no common terms or anything left to take care of, so I am good to move on. And let's manage this grand finale. Uh, we are taking v, which is 7x squared plus 15x plus 2, putting it over g, which is x squared minus 4. Okay, so that's the easy part. Now we have to look and see if these factor. So let's work on the top. Again, I'm going to do my way of doing it, which is to put a 7 here and here. And then I'm going to think, is there a way to make 14 that adds up to 15? Well, there certainly is. 14 times 1. How would I get a positive 15? They would both have to be positive. However, because I left that 7, one or both has to reduce and I'm working on the top right now. So the one that's going to reduce is going to be the second factor because I could divide out a seven. So now the final factored version of the top looks like this. And then keep in mind what you learned a long time ago with factoring, the bottom is the difference of two squares. This is the square of x, four is the square of two. So it breaks down into x, plus 2, x minus 2. These cancel or reduce. And so my final answer to this one is 7x plus 1 over x minus 2. And you can't cancel the x's or do anything like that because this is an entire grouping and it can't cancel out unless you have another one exactly like it. So none of the math is new. It's requiring you to use a lot of the math. You're going to need to remember how to do factoring, how to do some square root work, how to do distributing. Up here, we found ourselves having to do a little bit of the fraction power math that we just finished. So 6-3, the only new topic really is this way of writing things in function notation. But it's just saying, hey, take this polynomial and do this to it. So the math itself is not new, but that doesn't mean it's not a little bit tricky. So take your time. You have a worksheet. It's called 6.3 Day 1. So that is due prior to class on Thursday. So make sure that you've watched enough of the video and done enough of the examples to be successful on that. I will see you in class on Thursday. Bye, guys.